Okay, class, from a previous class, we already talked about the periodic table, what the atomic number was, uh, what the atomic symbol was, and what the atomic mass was. So let's quickly review what the atomic mass number is by looking at your periodic table. Um, let's circle the atomic mass for carbon, for example. The atomic mass for carbon is what, Taylor? 12.01. Right. And we always round the atomic mass to just the whole numbers. So it will be 12. We also talked about the atomic mass, the units for it, is AMUs. But in lab, you often use grams and moles. And the way you use grams and moles is this conversion unit called molar mass. Molar mass units for that is grams per mole. And in order to understand this, what you're going to do is for each of these um, atomic masses, the numerical value for molar mass is also the numerical value for the atomic masses. Okay. We're going to do a quick demonstration just to explain it a little bit better and so you can conceptually understand it. So imagine that pearls was an element. And if pearls was an element, the atomic mass number for that would be 2. So if the atomic mass for pearls is 2 AMUs, what would be the molar mass for pearls? <coughs> yes, 2 grams per mole because it's the same numerical value as the atomic mass. So if knowing that pearls is 2 grams per mole for the molar mass, and imagine that each pearl in here actually weighs 1 gram, how many pearls would I need to actually make one mole? Yes! <laughs> so excited you got that. Okay, so how many pearls did I need to actually make two moles? Yes, and how many pearls did I need to make half a mole? Yes, yay, class, I'm so excited. Okay, so if rubies was a, an element as well, and if rubies, the um, molar mass for that was four grams per mole, how many moles would it be if I gave you eight grams? Yes. And so if given, if told that you want to make grams from moles, and you're given two moles, how many grams would I need? Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. Understanding moles a little bit better. What a mole is, is Avogadro's number, which is up here. One mole is equal to Avogadro's number of par particles. And on, your, on each of your um, PowerPoint handouts, you can fill this in as we go along for your notes. So what Avogadro's number is actually equal to is 6.023 times 10 to negative 23rd, or to the positive 23rd. So basically, a mole is just a unit of measurement, just like centimeters, inches, it just breaks it down. So instead of saying you have 12 inches, you'd say you have one feet. So instead of saying, or one foot, instead of saying you have 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd particles, you'd just say you have one mole. So looking at our um, periodic tables, again, what would be one mole of magnesium? How many atoms would that be? This is also, this number is also, you can use this to, um, particles doesn't mean just Particles also use, means atoms or molecules. So if you're told that one mole, whoa, if you're told that one mole is equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd particles, how many atoms of magnesium would you have? If you have one mole of magnesium? Six. Yeah, 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And how many would you have? If you have one mole of gold, how many atoms would you have of gold? Exactly. I'm trying to get all this on the screen at once. Okay. Like we already said, 
um, one mole is equal to the number, no, like we already said, the molar mass is equal to the number of grams in one mole, which is also what we have up here. So basically, molar mass is the mass of one mole of a pure substance. Remembering that molar mass is measured in grams per mole. It's also equal to the numerical value of the atomic masses, which is something I already also said. One mole of carbon atoms is equal to how many grams then? It would just be equal to the atomic masses of all of these. So if you look at your periodic table and you look up carbon, exactly. And then this is just showing you more. Magnesium, you look up the periodic table for magnesium. How much? 20. And then copper? Do you round yep. up? You do round up. The whole purpose of this thing called molar mass is to be able to easily convert from grams to moles. This is the whole purpose of it because in lab, you're often told um, I need two moles of this or two grams of this, and all you're given is the molar mass. So that's the whole purpose of the whole molar mass to be able to do conversions quickly. This is an assessment problem for everyone to do as a class. We'll work it out together on the board as well. Okay, the problem says, aluminum is often used for the structure of lightweight bicycle frames. How many grams of aluminum are in three moles of aluminum? And we can set it up together. So the question is, how many grams of aluminum are in three moles of aluminum? Well, I'm going to actually show you this time how to work it out mathematically. First thing we need to define is what is the molar mass of aluminum? Yep. So the molar mass of aluminum is 27 grams. Knowing that the molar mass of aluminum is 27 grams, the conversion factors for aluminum, maybe let's just bring it all up here. Okay, so the molar mass for aluminum is 27 grams. So knowing that the conversion factors for aluminum is always the molar mass. Now this is just showing you how to do it mathematically. We already just the atomic mass for is 27 grams per mole. So, you also need to be able to flip it upside down, which would give you mole 27 grams. This is just flipping and giving you the reciprocal. The setup for this is asking you how many moles of aluminum, so three moles of aluminum, are in, the question is asking you how many moles of aluminum are in, how many grams of aluminum are in, 20, are in three moles of aluminum. So you use this conversion factor to get this. And for math classes, we already know that the moles would cancel out, giving us 81 grams of aluminum. And everybody can write that down and use that as a guide for their homework assignment. And the homework assignment is just a, yeah, homework. You have to practice what you do. That's what chemistry is, it's a bunch of practice. And the homework assignment is just to figure out if you're given four grams of nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, how many moles would that be? That would be the homework assignment, and that's all.